What's up my beautiful entrepreneurs? I know I can't be the only one that was having an issue with body butter and the texture not coming out right or not feeling the way that I was intending. And sometimes that just has to do with the ingredients that we are using or not using, I should say, in our formulas. Stay tuned as we take a deep dive into my top 10 ingredients that are must haves when it comes to making your body butter. Let's not waste any more time let's get right into the video now I'm going to share these ingredients with you and I'm also going to share some alternatives as well just so that you can be able to switch them out depending on what benefits you are trying to get from each ingredient you can be able to kind of swap things out if necessary but I feel like this is the holy grail this is the top 10 ingredients that you should just always have just to make sure that the body butter always comes out right now to start off with number 10. Now this is going to be arrowroot powder. Now I know some people may not think to use arrowroot powder, but arrowroot powder is a really great ingredient to always have in your body butter because it really helps to get rid of that um, oiliness and gre um, greasiness in your product and really helps to give it more of a luxury soft feel. Um, and I think that it really helps to elevate your body butter in a different way. Without it, I feel like your product is going to be a little greasy and it's going to have um, it's gonna have just like a little more greasiness and oiliness to it and I really think that the, the arrowroot powder helps to really absorb that and to make it more of a luxury soft powdery finish for your overall product and I think that's really kind of the target when you're trying to sell body butter is to have more of a luxury feel as a moisturizer so arrowroot powder is really going to do that for you now when it comes to the usage rate of um, arrowroot powder it's going to be you know between one to even 25% overall for your air root powder. Now, when it, when I realize when it's when I'm using it is that you don't need a lot. Um, I feel like sometimes. Uh, more than 5% is really pushing it like you don't really need that much you still want to have that oily consistency you still want it to feel soft and buttery but you don't want it to be overpowering and you still want it to have a bit of a powdery finish now as great alternatives I would use um, cornstarch or tapioca powder these are great um, alternatives but I do found that with the cornstarch it doesn't really give as much of that luxurious feel that the arrowroot powder does but it's still a really great alternative if you're not able to get your hands on arrowroot powder. Okay, so now for number nine, and this is going to be vitamin E. Now, this isn't just any old vitamin E that you're going to get at Amazon that's like in a big quantity. Now, you can get it in a big quantity, but it's going to be really expensive. Now, when it comes to this vitamin E, this is vitamin E mixed um, tocopherol a T50. Now, this is going to be the best high quality vitamin E that you're going to be using in your product. This is a vitamin E that I think that you should use overall um, the biggest difference that you're going to you're going to see directly with this vitamin E is that it's darker in color it's gonna have more of a brownish color it's still a little translucent but it's a lot browner in color um, and it's also gonna have a little bit of a distinct odor to it but it's not very strong it's not going to overpower anything that you're making and plus you're gonna be using it at such a small percentage that it's okay uh, when it comes to this vitamin E um, it's recommended to use it at uh, 0.5 to 1 percent and I would really just keep it there when it comes to vitamin E that's typically the usage rate that I go for is going to be 1 percent because that really does help um, with the ox oxidation of your products and keeping your oils from going rancid this is going to be the best vitamin E to use for that now it comes to an alternative um, I, I I would stray away from using anything but vitamin E. But if you're not able to get your hands on vitamin E, a great alternative could be rosehip seed oil. Uh, this is going to be very similar in its benefits and being in its purest form as well to um, help with, with the oxidation and to help keep your products pure and extend the shelf life. Then I would say that that would be a great alternative to use if you're not able to get to vitamin E. 
Okay, so now for number eight, this is going to be your fragrance oils. Now, when it comes to fragrance oils, this may not seem like an essential ingredient to have, but it really is because you wanna make sure that you're making products that are unique to your business and you can really um, get creative when it comes to fragrances. I have a, a few videos that I'll link down below that really help you to build scent profiles. And I think fragrance is really important when it comes to developing your brand and to uh, creating really great products now when it comes to your fragrances every fragrance isn't created equal there are certain fragrances that are going to only be a usage rate of two percent and then there are others that are going to have a usage rate of um, up towards to five percent it really depends on what you are using what you're purchasing um, your best bet when you are going online to look for a fragrance oil is to always make sure that you are looking in their description they will tell you what is the recommended usage rate for the exact um, uh, formula that you're creating whether it's soaps whether it's lotions whether it's body oil it's going to tell you there now a lot of times you're not going to see it say body butter directly um, but you can lump that in with your lotions you can lump that in with your oils and use that as the percentage gauge for your body butter now for number seven this is going to be essential oils now essential oils is another one that's really really important Important to your brand because this can really be segued to the particular types of products that you're trying to make um, essential oils are great for serums they're great for body oils they're also great for your body butters as well but when you're trying to make a product that's more therapeutic or a product that goes for its particular skincare issue and you have essential oils that can really remedy those problems then I think that essential oils is a great add-on to have for your ingredients and you can always have a mixture of the two i have you know regular fragrances that i sell then i also have a therapeutic uh, body butter that has uh, lavender and tea tree in there um so you can really have different you can kind of help uh, help two different types of audiences with that and you can also provide a variety of different scents as well and be more of on the holistic therapeutic end of making your skincare products so essential oils are great now when it comes to essential oils the usage rate is pretty universal when it comes to using it at to like 0.5 to upwards to one percent essential oils usually don't go any higher than that and this is because of it being a therapeutic grade these are going to be really really strong fragrances as well uh, one thing i noticed is that they do last a Lot, they do last a bit longer but they also um, don't last very long on the skin because of the fact that they are an essential oil don't worry about you having to use such a low percentage or that the fragrance may not be as strong when it comes to essential oils because of the the reasoning behind you using the essential oils has a different purpose than you using your fragrance your fragrance is more of like a fun light-hearted thing but the essential oils have a particular has a particular skincare issue that it's helping with now we've made it to number six now this is going to be castor oil now when it comes to castor oil this is a very versatile oil this oil will go for anything you can use this in hair products you're using this on body butter you're using this in your body oil you're using this in lip scrubs sugar scrubs there are so many ways that you can use castor oil and with it being such a thick you know voluptuous oil it really helps to um not loosen your body butter as much because i know that that can be a really big issue when you're when it comes to adding liquid oils is that it's going to liquefy your body butter a little bit more and you don't have to necessarily worry about that as much with um your castor oil now when you're using castor oil the uh, usage rate for this is typically going to be between one to like 50 percent i think you can use castor oil up to 100 percent but when it comes to making body butter i think to keep a low percentage is the smartest bet because you don't want it to take over any of the um, thickness that you are creating with the product i recommend using castor oil um, at the max being 10 percent um, just because you again you don't want it to lose any of the um, thickness that you're getting in your overall body butter great alternative to castor oil is going to be metal foam seed oil now this is going to be around the same thickness as castor oil so you're still getting like similar benefits with 
um, with this oil, but it's not going to, so it's not going to take away from those benefits that you're getting with the castor oil. So this would be a really great um, alternative because of the thickness that it also carries as well, just like the castor oil. And again, even with these alternatives, I will still use them at the same usage rate. Now for number five, we've made it to the middle. Now this is going to be unfractionated coconut oil. Yes, unfractionated, not the fractionated coconut oil. Um, the big, the biggest difference is going to be that unfractionated coconut oil is going to be in its uh, purest form. It's solid at room temperature, um, and with the fractionated coconut oil, it's going to be, um, it's going to be liquid at room temperature so you really don't want to have an oil like that in your body butter because it's going to again have too much loose oil in your formula which makes it harder to get those soft peaks which makes it harder to get that overall whipped um, consistency that you are always looking for it's just not going to have the same overall um, benefit to the actual formula so you want to make sure that it's going to be unfractionated coconut oil now um when it comes to the usage rate of unfractionated coconut oil it's going to be um at um five to twenty five percent overall now when i'm using it i am between 15 to 20 percent and this is because it's okay for this to be a big portion of your formula because this is going to be at a solid at room temperature. This is also really great when you're making a formula for um, closer to the winter time because you have a ingredient that is kind of a little bit more versatile in temperature where it can really help to loosen up your product a little bit or it can help to overly harden your product. Now, when it comes to alternative, there isn't really an alternative to unfractionated coconut oil because there's not another oil that solidifies like this um, that I have been able to find. If you are aware of a, another oil product that is unfractionated, that stays uh, solid at room temperature, then please let me know down below because I would love to have more information about that oil and be able to test it out as well. Um, but that's just not something that I have come across. So when it comes to that, that is just something that I consistently use in all of my body butter formulas. Now for number four. Now this is going to be beeswax. Now I love beeswax because I think that it really changed my overall formula when it came to body butter. When I first started making body butter, I honestly was just making, um, I was just adding in the butters and that was it and I didn't even consider beeswax to begin with. So I think beeswax is a really great add-on into any of your body butter formulas. Now when it comes to beeswax, I wouldn't use it in any like if you like your sugar scrubs or I wouldn't put in any, any serums or like anything like that. Beeswax is great for lip balms, your body lotion, like your um, body bars. Um, any like sh if you're making a shampoo bar or a conditioning bar this is an ingredient that brings up the melting point of your overall product and makes it solidify um, that much more so that you don't have to worry about it melting as much and it's a great uh, natural way to do that and so I really love beeswax I think it's really great to use um, now your usage rate for beeswax can go all the way to 10 percent but when you're making a product like this like when you're thinking about your body butter you don't want it to uh, you don't want to use it at that high of an amount because then you're going to have too high of a body butter when it comes to um when it comes to beeswax a little bit can go a long way having having just a little too much beeswax can make your body butter really really hard and having maybe a little too little can make it very very soft as well or keep it at its normal um it's normal firmness and not add in that additional support and that's really what you're using the beeswax for is to add that additional support to the overall to the overall formula so that it can have a lot more structure to it now when it comes to alternatives for beeswax um these are going to be more vegan alternatives um, and so this is going to be calendula wax and also even soy wax is a great alternative for it as well um, I know some people can't find beeswax where they are so calendula wax is a really good alternative and soy wax as well If you're not able to find it and do 
the same thing to your body butter so the usage rate will still stand well with all of these i found that even if i use calendula wax in my body butter i still got the same overall texture and firmness that the beeswax gave so now for number three now this is a really great product i love this and i think that if anything you should have this product in your arsenal at all times and this is going to be stearic acid now this is a really great product because it helps to give your product that um, buttery feel without the butter and I think that that can be really important um, to creating the, creating more stability for your product, especially in the summertime, because I found that adding the stearic acid, when I added that, it really helped my body butter to stand firm, even in the wintertime when it's hot and it's going out to be shipped. So I think stearic acid is a really great option to have always because it will really help to soften, soften your product, but it also brings up the melting point of the product because the melting point of stearic acid is up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit so that baby is not melting and so I think it's really great to have stearic acid can be used in your body butter this can also be used when you're making body lotions or if you're making like a body bar or if you're using a making a lotion bar this is really great to add in there um, because it will still add that firmness it still gives that buttery feel to your product but again it doesn't add the oiliness another reason why i love stearic acid is that it also helps to take away that greasiness that your butters will give so you can take away from your butters and your overall formula and replace that with stearic acid and it's going to allow your your uh, body butter to still have that buttery look that buttery feel to it but it's not going to be overly greasy so if you're having an issue with your product being too greasy or you don't like how greasy that it feels i challenge you to add stearic acid to your formula and take out some of your butters and let me know how that turns out for you. Now, if you're not able to have stearic acid, a good alternative is going to be a mostly falling wax NF. Now, when it comes to this, it still gives you that butter without the oily feel, um, but I just don't think that it has the same luxurious feel that the stearic acid will give. I just love the feel that the stearic acid gives to the overall formula, but it's still a really great alternative, and it's something that I would definitely give a try, because what feels more luxurious and soft and fluffy to me may be different for you, so I always challenge you to try things out a little bit to see what works best for you and what what formula is the best all the formulas that i give on this channel are really just base formulas for you to test i just want you to test things out i want you to see what you like what you don't like and what works best for you and your business because everyone's is going to be a little bit different and i want you to i want you to change your formulas based on that and make the, cha the necessary changes so that it's unique to you and your business so um so don't feel like you have to use these particular ingredients you can always use the alternatives and you can always switch things out and see what works best for you but i always think that these are the best to have okay so now for number two this is going to be cocoa butter now this is a really important ingredient this is a very hard butter that is constantly solid and it doesn't it uh, takes you know a really high temperature to get really melted so you're gonna really need this product to help to um, give your body butter a little bit more thickness and to firm it up a little bit but not way too much you don't need a lot of um, your cocoa butter because it's really, really hard and you don't want that to um, mess with the overall texture from the softer butters that you have. This is supposed to just to elevate a bit elevate it a little bit more because with the beeswax, it's a lot harder. It has a higher melting point than cocoa butter so you just want to make sure that using too much of it you have that perfect balance now when it comes to cocoa butter i'm always using around 10 percent of my overall formula because it really because i don't think that you need to have it too high of a percentage again because of how hard of a butter that it is so um having it at 10 percent is really the perfect usage rate for cocoa butter now, if you're looking for an alternative for co cocoa butter, it would be cocoon butter. Now, this is going to be another hard butter. Um, this one doesn't have, obviously, that 
um, a strong chocolatey scent to it that cocoa butter will um, but it does have its own unique smell but using it again also at 10% is going to be the um, best bet because you don't want it to again be too hard okay. okay now we have made it to number one definitely put some celebration hats in the comment section down below so I know that you've made it here with me and you've lasted to number one I love you and thank you so much for sticking with me through this whole video now for number one this is going to be shea butter now shea butter is going to be the most ingredient most important ingredient in your body butter shea butter is going to be the structure of your body butter it's going to um, be the main benefits that you are getting from your body butter so you want to make sure that this is an ingredient that's soft um it has like a, a, all those nutrients that you're looking for it still has like that nice chocolatey aroma to it it's not quite like chocolate but it still has um some remnants of a chocolatey scent to it it's a beautiful uh, texture it's really soft like i said and it's just really great to use. Now, I typically am using up to 40% of the overall formula because this is a really important ingredient to your overall uh, product. When it comes to making body butter, a lot of people just whip the shea butter and leave it at that. But when you're making it and you're selling it, there's other ingredients that you wanna add to really elevate it to make it a lot better. Um, but shea butter overall is a really great um, ingredient. And that's really what kind of started and moved the body butter uh, movements. If you're looking for an alternative to shea butter, there are a lot. And a lot of the alternatives that you see with shea butter actually use shea butter within them. So like avocado um, butter is a really good alternative and that a lot of times has shea butter in it. Mango butter, that's a really good alternative. That's really the second best um, alternative. And it's really, um, it really depends on the benefits that you're trying to use with this. Now, when it comes to mango butter, I do know that it is a bit softer of a butter than your shea butter. So you just have to keep that in mind. That may uh, change the formula and the texture a little bit. So you just want to keep that in mind. I know some people use a combination of the two. They have a uh, formula with the shea and the mango butter so i think that's a really great idea as well um also you can use coffee butter um instead of shea butter for your product and coffee butter a lot of times is used with mango butter or used with shea butter or a combination of the two so you'll be surprised how much shea butter is going to be used in your overall ingredients no matter what because even your alternatives are using shea butter now when it comes to these ingredients they all really help to make your body butter better and then they're really great ways to really great ingredients to just add just to see where you may be messing up with your body butter and how you can just make it better overall now if you're looking to figure out how to even make your body butter and you're just don't even know what to do next then watch this video here as i go step by step on how to make a body butter this is going to have a full recipe included and i think it will really help you and give you the guidance that you are looking for and i'll catch you in the next one